전투를 시작합니다. Time to draft in game three. Let's see if Redemption can show us something a little bit stronger here. Team Hero will get first ban. All right. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping that we have a better draft here from Redemption. They will ban Toronto, oh, though. Oh, they, they definitely, uh, I mean, this is what they needed to be doing, is not letting them, them get two top tier picks, right? Let's see who Hero picks first. I think there's a high chance we'll just see Kel'Thas again. Yeah. Uh, I, I would imagine that that's what we're going to see. But it could be like a Zagar or something as well. Yeah. And of course, uh, I think I'm more interested. Yeah, there's there's a Zagara. So I wonder if we'll see like a Kale Poss Thrall. I would love to see that as the counter picks here. That would be really smart. I think it's I think it's time for Redemption to take Kale because I know the hero will take it if they don't take it here. And Zagara is my favorite hero to play on this map. I think she's just so strong here. Mm. She's great at dealing with the damage to the Immortals from a safe distance. There's Thrall. There's Keldos. You're exactly on the money, Artosis. Well, this is how you actually draft currently in Heroes of the Storm if you want to win. Um, so Team Redemption is done the funny business. And they're going for like a, a real strong comp now. So over here, uh, maybe a Muradin coming out. I guess it really matters on exactly what they want to do with that. But uh, they may want to pick up like a strong damage here, like if they want Jaina or something here. Yeah, Jaina would be, there she is. Jaina would be a great choice. Um, and I think here you definitely do want to grab Muradin. Um, because I think he's absolutely the best tank on this map. Sonya comes out first, though. We have seen um, that Darvish really likes to play yeah. him, and he's quite a good Sonya, so. And Sonya uh, wrecks Immortals super, super fast, so uh, not too surprised to see Sonya picked up so quickly. But that does leave the possibility of Muradin open uh, over four team redemption. But first, we gotta go into the second ban, and uh, it might be a healer ban time. Yes. Um, we'll see if they wanna take that away. I think uh, there's also a high chance we will see a murdered ban for Redemption here because they know that uh, that is going to be potentially available. They could take it themselves though because they don't yet mm -hmm. have a warrior. So there's a this is like one of the tougher bans because it's not a clear yeah. choice. Yeah. It's like do you ban out a healer here? Uh, do you do you ban out one of those strongest strongest tanks? Uh, you know, Muradin, etc. That type of thing. Yeah, I feel like. Um, with Kel'Thas already taken away, there's not a clear ban here based on the first two games for Heroes, you know, choices they've chosen. Um, because Tyrande is gone, we're not going to see Diablo. Johanna is the same ban we saw last time, and I think this is not a bad ban. It makes no. sense. Uh, Johanna is uh, really, really strong in this map as well, don't forget. Being able to pull people into stuns is pretty cool. And Falstag gets banned. Uh, over on Team Hero's side. Didn't expect to see that one. Um, it's very interesting how often Falstad does go in the second ban phase here. Yeah. Um, like, I, again, like we were talking about yesterday, like I've seen fantastic clutch Falstad plays, but I haven't seen as much as I haven't seen, I feel like. Yeah, his gust is really strong because he can use it to push players into the immortal, and mm. that will, of course, cause stuns, possibly, you know, AoE stuns to go off, and that can actually just win you a fight right away. Totally. Um, you can also push them off the immortal when you want to finish it off. Diablo is going to be given to Redemption as well as Karazim. Okay, I like it. I like it. I think that this is a, by far their best draft so far. I guess it's not as fun or interesting as some of their other ones, but uh, this is really strong right now. Now over to the other side, they need a healer and they need a main tank. So, uh, will they grab Morales, do you think? I think there's a possibility of that. I think um, I mean, she has cleanse, her, her burst heal is very good. I think that we could see Malfurion taken here as well. I don't oh, think yeah. it would be a bad choice because he's going to give that sustained healing in, mm -hmm. the, in the fights with his tranquility. He's also got his roots that can extend the root on the defense of the um, of the immortal. You know, It's great at zoning here. You're very right about that. Um, yeah, and I, he could... I mean, even his Moonfire is great on this map for giving you a lot of ideas about where they're going to be. You get a lot of vision that way. I like Malfurion okay. personally. Um, the question is, are they going to grab another tank, or are they going to try to grab some more sustained damage? I think they kind of need a tank. Yeah, it's Sonya's solo tank is... I don't even know why she's classified as a tank. <laughs> uh, but Muradin and Morales actually do end up coming up. Um, not too, too surprised. I think that these are good picks. Uh, you know, Morales actually has some good targets here for uh, Stim Drone and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. 
And uh, what was the final pick on the other side? It was Morales. I mean, oh, uh, on the other pick, yeah. on the other side, ETC. Okay, okay. So we got to see that for just a second there, but that was, that was a good pick too, I think. Yeah, I think this is actually going to be our best game of the series we've seen so far, just based on the drafts alone. It looks like the players are in the lobby. The game is loaded and ready. We're going to go into game number three, Hero versus Redemption, to see if Redemption can stay alive or if Hero is going to close it out. Check out this picture <laughs> of Kael'thas. Let's That's all we have is Kael'thas picks. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Wolf. All we have is Kael'thas picks in the game, in the crowd. Yeah. Hopefully in the bushes every now and then. Sure. You've got a thrall with you. Listen, if there's anybody out there um, who is like a bilingual Korean who goes on Invent a lot, let it be known that both Artosis and myself would love if there was a fan who drove a, a drew a Kael'thas in our likeness each. <laughs> like, I want to see a fan hold up a sign of, like, Artosis and Wolf both drawn in Kael'thas, like, with Kael'thas ears and, like, a little Give bit longer his, hair. His, his very long eyebrows. Yeah. His and epically his, long eyebrows. And his weirdly shaped broken fingers. You ever look close at Kael'thas' fingers, man? He's going to go, no, he's he gonna never, go s see like a bone doctor for that, man. I mean, call me weird, but I've never looked closely at Kael'thas' <laughs> fingers, Wolf. <laughs> I'm serious. You, now that I've said this, you're going to look and you're going to know. I, I will zoom in tomorrow, I promise. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to see a bit of an engage here. Swoy jumps in. Oh, look at that. Forcing Overheat to actually jump away using both cool, uh, cooldowns on that. Yeah, a lot of damage being put down on him immediately there. Looks like Redemption wanted to take down a tower, but not able to do it this time. No one dealt with the Hydralis spawn either, so that was actually a ton of damage mm -hmm. for Zagara. Yeah, definitely, but, you know, we do see, uh, we definitely... Well, not with Kerzin, you don't heal through it that quickly, actually. The, the meta can definitely heal you through there. But in the top lane, we do see Thrall versus Cigar. That's a really good matchup there. Thrall, with the amount of self-heal he has, is definitely one of the heroes that can kind of stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against Cigar. I mean, she like kind of wins the lane, but it's not too bad. Well, we're going to see another big engage here. Darvish gets the heal beam instantly, though. And look at that stun on Anka as well. He's going to go down and sticking around a bit too long there. Now they are going to be able to push onto these towers as well. A lot of mana left over on Magi here, so definitely can help his team to push right in there. That that medic heal is just so, so strong. You know what's interesting, too, about that is what we just saw him do, and this is something that you know a lot of people have discussed for a long time. All that thought was we see Sway nearly wow. get blown up, and he's saved. Incredible, was incredible Morales play. I was actually a little bit surprised that he didn't put the heal beam on him a little bit quicker there, but having saved uh, saved Muradin, very nicely done. Looks like a tiny experience lead here for Team Hero. Yeah, but one of the things I wanted to point out is what they did with Morales there was they simply uh, made Muradin a bullet absorber. Like mm -hmm. He absorbed the cannon, cannon ammunition, so yeah. lane will constantly be pushed every time they get a wave down there. Certainly. All right, you have a big blizzard coming down, and oh my god, they actually do end up taking down ETC here. A lot of damage being put on Swoy. Does have to jump away. Magi actually going ahead and healing at this point. Yeah, Swoy going to actually continue to get ready to jump in. Diablo goes down. Good chaining of those chills here by D.Va. He's even going on to Coconut Milk, but his team is not supporting him, so actually ends up being a mistake, and he oh. will be killed by that living bomb. Yeah, Magi not quite getting there in time for that heal. Um... All right, I mean, I, I've liked Magi's play so far uh, in the series and in the replays I've seen, and even when he was on Danwa Joker, but um, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like his, he's not switching targets as quickly as I would imagine he would here on Medic. I think he just really thought, um, you know, that, well, you know, in this case, I really think he thought that um, Jaina was going to come back. Because I think that was a mm. mistake as well, was yeah, the chase it, alone there. So it, it, Definitely, I do agree with that. It was an overextension. I mean, that was on that one specific example. I think mm. your overall arcing point, though, is stands. The target switching has not been as quick. This uh, Immortal Valyrian will have, like, 16k shields worth of hit points. So, <laughs> going to be a tougher one. Usually, your first Immortal doesn't go that strong. Mm -hmm. Now, it does look like they want to counter push. Uh, this is great to do on that very first Immortal, because it's never really going to do that much anyways. And look at that, Diablo flipping Swoy over, not the one that you want to flip over. Anyone else might die if you throw him over there. 
Uh, it does actually, you know, knock that gore toss on cooldown for a little bit longer. It weakens the push, but I mean, look at this, the placement of this scouting drone as well. You can actually see over the wall, so they always know where to drop the blizzards. Oh, on <laughs> Onko nearly being killed here. Soy under heels. He's trying to grab uh, Tail. Nearly goes down, but a nice save there. Karazim on point. Uh, Sink Tail turning tail and running there. In the meantime, the Immortal is still alive and well up top. We do have Zagara continuing to push with them, and that fort taking half damage already. Yeah, the shields are down, but Zagara's done her work here, and she's also spread a ton of creep. Notice the middle of the map as well is quite set up for that. And with this uh, level 7 talent lead, we do see Cleanse is up for Morales. Uh, battle momentum as well, and we're going to see... Uh, actually, Arcane Intellect taken for Jaina. That's interesting. Yeah, that's going to allow Jaina to just, like, continually drop blizzards all over the place and not really worry about it. But, I mean, without that extra radius, sometimes you won't catch exactly the heroes you're looking for. Sure. I think it's mostly to deal with the Immortal in this case, I guess, um, to constantly be able to put that damage down. Uh, yeah, and look at that. She actually goes ahead and upgrades her Q here as well. So maybe some rapid fire... Uh, Rapid Fire Janus spells coming out. Yeah, some Frostbolt action mm -hmm. coming at you guys. Um, we do see Zagara is going for that increased uh, creep spread, which I think is absolutely by far the best uh, talent choice for this map. And also the increased range for her basic attacks. You know what's really interesting? I completely agree with you. I think that you should be getting this talent, but the amount of times I see Korean Zagaras go for battle momentum on seven, is insane. Like, they just love battle momentum on Sagara, but yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. I like this uh, talent a lot more here. I just think for this map specifically, it's like way better um, mm. because it gives you so much vision because your immortal actually doesn't give you vision even when you're defending it. Yeah. We're going to see this insanely powerful push in the top lane. Diablo is actually rotating up, but very slow. By the time he's here, 10 may be hit. I mean, he's yeah. taking his time up there. And as they hit 10, you really don't want to fight him. And look at this. Morales has a lot of mana left over, so that is a very big deal. But they're actually going after Morales now, and it looks like Magi is going to end up dying here. Well, let's see if they can actually make this worth it, though. St. Tail's going to fall. It's going to be a one-for-one. One. And even without Morales here, their, uh, you know, their siege pushing is quite strong. Like, one minion wave away from ah, 10. There we go. Finally gets it. Oh, Onko is going to go down as well. And with 10 up... Ring of Frost is going to be the talent of choice for Jaina, and uh, that'll also give them some escape potential here if they need to. Yeah, that was that was a nice defense there by Redemption to be able to actually jump in and blow up Morales because if she stays alive, then you are absolutely going to be able to push down that keep. And in this case, it's especially good because she skipped uh, her talents on one and four that actually make her very tough to kill. Yeah. Um, those are going right for the Immortal here. Darvish is just going to sit in the front and even tank that stun. He's not too concerned about it. That's what Sony does. Mm -hmm. And look at how quickly they've knocked it down to half health. I mean, that was in less than 10 seconds' time. Yeah, that's... Uh, you can really see why Darvish uh, chose to go ahead and use his standard Sonya here, dealing so much damage so quickly. Look at that. And in fact, actually, even Stim Drone. So in a matter of seconds, this is going to be cleared out. Yep. With the Stim Drone here, it's instantly going to knock this Immortal into the lane. Nearly 22,000 shields on oh, that bad boy. Man. That's man. like, I mean, this keep is definitely going to go down. They're not even level 10 yet, so this is still like an unfightable situation. I guess because they're behind the walls, they can throw down a lot of damage to Kael'thas still, but without even a Phoenix here? Ooh, it's going to be tough, and, and keep in mind, you know, a lot of their comp is around, it revolves around their heroics to engage, and without that, they really just have to kind of sit back and wait yeah. for 10. It's a very, very good point. Uh, you know, no Sunder, uh, no no Mosh, no Phoenix. It's no Apocalypse even. Yeah, you can't save anybody without your uh, palm either, mm. so. Now look at this. It looks like Diablo trying to come around. Beautiful grenade there by Magi. Really? Not going to take any of that this time. Really nice to done. Onko's going to be, again, the first to fall, it looks like here. Darvis going to try to Ancient Spear him. He does get away. St. Tail actually doing a really nice move and sneaks through there, drawing everybody away, which saves the rest of his team. He also survives, but this push is so powerful, they lose the keep, and they're going to lose a lot of the shields on their core, if not some of the health on it as well. Yeah, this is pretty tough right now, but it looks like Onka going to go ahead after Magi once again. Does flip him over. Ring of Frost goes down, missing everybody. Magi somehow kept alive. Yeah, Wuje also nearly killed by Overheat and Confi actually barely escaped. Meanwhile, we do see Kale 
does fall down here. And now Uje being kept alive by this heal. Majay barely has any mana left. Mm. The core is going to go down, though, Artosis, during all of this.